started for me in, when Reed Anderson gave a 14-year-old high school freshman a job at his old town station at WCYN. My uncle did ball games for Reed Anderson at WCYN. And I would go, he thought I had a good radio voice. And he said, he called me one day and he said, I want you to go see Reed Anderson on a Wednesday afternoon after school. And I did. We had an associated press machine. And he went in and ripped off a five minute news summary and said, read this to me. And I did. And he said, can you start Saturday? That's how it went. I'm not unlike a lot of people sitting in this room tonight. I'm a small town, small market broadcast. And I do a live morning show called Mornings on Me. And it's a chance, it's a conversation, it's not an interview. I don't have a list of interview questions. So the, a guy comes up to me and he said, I like listening to you because you're not professional like those other guys. I actually, I took it as a compliment because that's exactly what, it, what we wanted to be. We bring people into the studio, sit them in there and talk about what they want to talk about. Uh, it can be their work. It can be their church, it can be their civic organization. Gosh, I brought the bass fishing team in for Clark County, and they slept in most of the program. That was a good one. And then me and my knowledge of, of fishing, so we, we had a lot of dead air that morning. He used to run 1380 here in Winchester. I don't really think it was a show, but we, there used to be a trivia contest or um, a, a somewhat of a contest where you had to guess the word or something and I would try to call that thing at least 25 times um, every time and I was finally told to stop calling. In my family, my wife and two boys had been with me for the whole radio ride and there were times I wouldn't be home for several days because I was either at the radio station or doing something for the radio station and I missed a lot of stuff. Uh, Dad never missed any events um, that, you know, work never got in, in, in the way of that, is what I would say. He really was there for my brother and I all the time, and he was a very supportive father. His work ethic is unmatched. My father would get up at four in the morning, every morning. He would make breakfast for us when we were kids. He would take us to school. He would go be on the air. He would come get us from school so we didn't have to ride the bus. I knew something funny was going on because Tom McMakin came in with him and this was prior to 8 o'clock in the morning and you don't see Tom prior to 8 o'clock in the morning. I couldn't be more proud both personally and professionally to, to be here and to, to be the one to tell you that on behalf of the Kentucky Broadcasters Association and KBA's Legacy Awards Committee, Tim Smith has been unanimously chosen really? to be inducted into the Kentucky what Broadcasters Hall of Fame. Well, how about that? What well, about I, that? I appreciate it. The Hall of Fame has always been something that I don't think he even realized he could obtain, and it's an honor that he definitely deserves. I shivered and shook and thought, of it. How, how could this be, and how unde undeserving, you know? He was so excited that day, and unfortunately... I had a stroke and the brain man, aneurysm. And that's somewhat of the driving force to say, hey, we're gonna beat this because you got to be at the Hall of Fame September 30th. So he's very excited. I want to say what an honor, honor it is to be inducted in, into the Hall of Fame, particularly with this class. Uh, got Bill Bryant, Dave Shepard, Tom Leach, Gene Burke, all great rock and broadcast said he's not going in alone, he's taking our family and the whole city of Winchester and probably Cynthia is what he would say to into the Hall of Fame with him.